Just this past month, the biggest student amateur rocketry competition took place, and there were some exciting achievements. I'm of course referring to the Spaceport America Cup, which is a competition in which collegiate groups from all around the world come and compete and showcase their rockets. This year, there are over 100 universities scheduled to compete, with over 50 of them actually getting off the launch pad. Overall, a really impressive year for student amateur rocketry. But who amongst these university groups is the best of the best? That's what we're here to answer today. The Spaceport America Cup is a bit unique in the way that it's structured, because instead of having the highest flying rocket being the one that wins the award, they actually have a target altitude that they need to get as close as they can to in order to score the most points. This puts a unique spin on the competition that favors precise engineering over just designing things to the max. Overall, the competition has six different categories, each of which are tailored towards a specific altitude and propulsion type that the rockets will be using. There are two altitudes in which university groups can compete to, either to 10,000 feet or 30,000 feet. That would be the equivalent of roughly 3,000 meters or 9,000 meters. And within these two different altitudes, there's three different propulsion categories that you can fall into. They can either be the SRAD category for solid motors, SRAD stands for Student Researched and Developed. So these rockets are completely developed by students and they don't buy anything off the shelf for the propulsion system. The next category is also an SRAD category, which is for hybrids and liquids. Hybrids and liquid rockets tend to be a bit more complicated to make, so they kind of have a category of their own. And then finally, there is a category for what's called COTS, which is commercial off the shelf. So an engine that you just kind of buy from a manufacturer and then incorporate it into your rocket. And these three categories also exist for the 30 kilometer altitude as well. So that makes a total of six categories. I've done the math, it checks out. Up first, we have the most popular category, which is for the COTS 10K. This year, they had 46 teams competing. With such stiff competition, it certainly is a bit challenging to be that number one spot. So who was able to achieve it? The winner comes from Case Western Reserve University with their late defect rocket. This rocket was about 1.8 meters tall with a diameter of roughly 150 millimeters. It also featured a solid M1939 commercial motor, which was able to carry their rocket all the way up to 9,898 feet. That's right, they got really close to that 10,000 feet mark, just 102 feet shy of it. The way that they were able to get so close to their altitude milestone was actually to use these drag features that they had on their vehicle, which they could actuate in order to constantly regulate their speed on the way to the 10 kilometer target. Definitely a really cool feature that allows you to get that optimum precision. Of course, it's not just enough to get to the altitude, you also need to recover the vehicle all the way back to the ground. And Case Western University was able to do this to score those extra points that they needed to be number one in this category. One other notable fact is that this was actually Case Western's first appearance in the Spaceport America Cup. So, really good job for the first try! Up next, we have the 10K SRAD category for solid motors. Once again, this means that the motor has been completely developed by the students, with no commercial help on the propulsion system. Only nine teams competed in this category, but that didn't mean the competition was less fierce. And this year, it was Kent State University that had the best design. Kent State University's rocket was called Whiplash, and it stood at about 3 meters tall. Whiplash also came pretty close to that 10,000 feet boundary that they were shooting for, reaching an altitude of 9,627 meters. Congratulations on the win, Kent State University, and we look forward to what's in development in the future. The final 10K category is the SRAD Hybrid and Liquid category. This category had eight student groups competing, but unfortunately, only one university was actually able to get a rocket into the air. I'm all alone. There's no one here beside me. And this kind of speaks to the overall difficulty increase that you have stepping up from solid rockets to hybrids and liquids. So not quite as much competition between the groups, but more competition with, you know, the engineering of the rocket. <laughs> Nonetheless, the default winner of this category still put up a pretty good performance. The group that won this time was called Oronos from Polytechnic Montreal. The rocket that Oronos entered into this challenge was the Atlas Mark II, which is actually a hybrid rocket. This means that it's using a solid fuel and a liquid oxidizer. With this system, they're able to get their rocket to an altitude of 7,825 feet which is just over 2,000 feet shy of the target of 10,000 feet. So still not a bad performance. Congratulations to the Aronos team, and we look forward to some more successful performances in the 10K SRAD category for hybrids and liquids. Moving up to the 30K altitudes, we first have the 30K COTS category. This year we had 20 student groups competing with 12 successful launches, and the precision of the final altitude got really close. 
There are just a few hundred feet that separate the second team from the first team. The student group called Propulse NTNU, hailing from Norway, with their rocket, Birkeland, was able to reach an altitude of 29,573 feet. Pretty close to that 10k mark. You would think that would probably win the category, but you'd be wrong. No, no way. Not this time. The winner of this year's category is actually a student group that comes from the University of Sydney. They built a rocket called the Blue Wren, which is powered by a solid O-class motor. Overall, the rocket stands at around 3 meters tall and just over 150 millimeters wide. Blue Wren soared into the sky with such precision that it hit an altitude of 29,933 feet. That's less than 100 feet from the target. To put that in perspective, that's kind of like hitting a bullseye that's only a few millimeters wide from across a football field. Pretty incredible. Up next, we have the 30K SRAD solid motor category. With five teams competing and four successful launches, this actually ended up being the most successful category in the whole competition. Although there wasn't quite as high as a competition between first and second as there was in the COTS category, we do still have a kind of interesting story here. Winning this category was West Virginia University with their Appalachian Sunset rocket. Appalachian Sunset is powered by a solid O-class motor, which was developed completely in-house by the West Virginia University. And with this rocket, they are able to achieve an altitude of 28,997 feet, which is just over a thousand feet short of the, of the mark. But interestingly enough, this rocket actually wasn't the closest to the 30k feet mark. Oregon State University actually built a rocket which came close to that 30k mark, coming in at an altitude of 30,578 feet. But because they went over the mark, it turns out that the way competition rules work, it actually penalizes a mark that goes over the line more than it would rockets that go under the line. This is kind of for safety reasons so that, you know, we don't encourage the student groups to far exceed the boundary of the 30K mark and send them outside of the safety zone. In addition to this, the Oregon State University was not able to have a successful recovery. So Appalachian Sunset's successful recovery was able to score points here where the Oregon State University rocket didn't. So ultimately, this is what led to the success of the West Virginia University team. The final category of the day is the 30K SRAD hybrid liquid rocket category. This category also had five student groups competing, but unfortunately only two successful launches. Because again, those hybrid and liquids tend to be a bit more complicated. The winner out of these two groups was the University of Tennessee, Knoxville, with their successful Operation Redshift rocket. This rocket is also about three meters tall and 150 millimeters in diameter and it's powered by an O-class hybrid engine. This hybrid rocket is utilizing nitrous oxide as an oxidizer and a plastic rubbery substance as the fuel. With this system, they're able to achieve a final altitude of 28,878 meters, which is pretty close to that 30K target. And ultimately, this is what led them to be successful in this category. Out of all the categories, this is definitely the hardest one of the bunch. So congratulations to the University of Tennessee Knoxville team. This truly is a monumental accomplishment. Before we get to the winner of the whole event, we do have uh, two or three honorable mentions that we should note. First, we have the other successful launch in the 30K SRAD hybrid liquid category, which comes out of Switzerland. Coming from this university on screen, which I'm not even gonna try to pronounce because my German is not that good, uh, there's a student group called Eris, which built their Helvetica rocket. And it actually reached the highest altitude of the whole competition. Although that's not necessarily the reason for the competition, you want to get close to that 30k, but it's still notable that they were able to get to a total altitude of 34,000 feet. That equates to just over 10 kilometers. Ignition, we have a lift off. Now what's interesting about this rocket is that it actually breaks the amateur rocket sheet record for Switzerland. So congratulations to the Eris team on being the best amateur rocket builders in all of Switzerland. The second honorable mention goes to the University of Calgary team. I am of course from Calgary, so I gotta talk about my home city, come on. So how do the Rocketeers from my home city fare? In order to compete in this category, the University of Calgary team built Offspray. Unfortunately, the rocket didn't quite achieve the goals it was looking for. Unfortunately, its airframe was ripped apart only a few seconds after the launch, so it wasn't able to get to the target altitude and complete the challenge at the SA Cup. This event is usually referred to as a shred and essentially nullifies all the points that you get for the launch of the rocket. But regardless of the result, it certainly makes for some exciting viewing. 
I hope that the University of Calgary recovers from this failure and makes an even better rocket next year. Finally, the moment we've been waiting for. Who was the best rocket of the day? It turns out that the winner of all the categories, which basically just looks at the points that you score with getting close to your altitude milestone, was actually the University of Sydney. Basically because the University of Sydney came so close to that 30k feet mark with just 29,933 feet, they scored so many points there that they basically just kind of blew away the competition. They also had a successful recovery and other little things that helped to get them the points that they needed in order to be the top of the competition. So congratulations to the University of Sydney team with their successful Blue Red rocket to achieve a win at the Spaceport America Cup. The competition this year was certainly very fierce and we hope that it will encourage student groups to get even more competitive into the future. And if you're a student anywhere in the world looking to get into the business of rocketry, be sure to look to the universities for potential groups that you could join. And if your university doesn't have a group, why not start a new one? There are always new groups that are coming into these competitions. So basically, the more the merrier. Maybe we can even justify having some more competitions at other places. Sometime in the next few years, Astra also hopes to put an entry into the Spaceport America Cup. So maybe watch out for that. If you liked the video, be sure to give a like. And remember to expand your horizons. <laughs>